Okay, I had a few requests for a little bit more information about how to use uh, the, the tools, especially this tri-select tool, um, to edit the meshes. It's pretty limited, but it does have a few things to it that you can use uh, and a couple of ways that it works that I think are important to maybe uh, outline and uh, give some idea of how to use it. It's fairly effective at doing really basic stuff and really just cutting away stuff, and what's what I, that's what I'm primarily using it for. I mean, that's really all you can do with it, really, is just select and delete. But um, uh, but the way it works, um, you know, again, you're going to be way better off using something like Blender. But uh, for those of us who don't really have time to learn Blender yet or haven't figured out enough of it to do this kind of stuff, um, because we're working on this level of things, we're working on the actual, you know, gaming and the models here, this is sufficient for my needs right now to kind of reduce down um, unneeded components of the meshes. So what we're looking at here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the selection here and drag my window over. All right. Okay, so first thing is you're, it's very important uh, your positioning. If you are, this has a uh, kind of a clipping plane uh, for where the camera is and where your cursor can go. So right now if I hit this, it'll select this. I'm looking to select some of these pieces back here. But if you're kind of inside of a mesh like this and you try to go here, you're not going to get the circle. So you got to be real careful of your clipping planes uh, when you're moving around. Because sometimes I like to get, I'll show you in a minute how, how this works. I like to get like below and have uh, things exposed to, to the sky or the background. I'll tell you why in a minute. And um, in order to do that, you can't be too close to something behind your camera position or it won't work. Or worse yet, even if you do get the circle, it might pick something back here and not the intended target. That's very important. That positioning aspect is going to be really critical and really you'll have to experiment because when you try to take out, like you see I have a bunch of fragments here I'm trying to edit out. When you try to take something out and you place the green, the circle over it, it changes. We'll talk about that in a second. But Often you can't get, like I got nothing on, well maybe there it goes, but sometimes you can't get the circle and you got to move to a different position like this or a different position like this. So it's going to be very important that you're, where your clipping plane is, where your camera is in relation to that stuff, that you're not picking the wrong thing or inside of something that might cause you to pick the wrong thing. So that's what you'll have to play around with. It's kind of hard to explain until you actually use it a few times, but you know, many times these, these uh, facets, these triangles can only be seen from one angle or, or a certain, ang uh, certain angle. And you won't see it from the other side, you won't see it from above, and you have to move around to get to a, a point where the cursor will change. And on that topic, what happens here is when you're using this tool, what ends up, what, what it happens is, is if you notice if I go over here, there's nothing. Because the selected object is this car here. And that's the sky. Sometimes you can end up picking the sky, in which case you just have to select away, but it won't edit that. Whatever mesh you have picked to select, and you're on the select triangles, it will only edit, you can only take away from those. So if you end up clicking on something else, another object, uh, like the sky or another, you know, whatever object in the, in the viewport, it won't change any of the triangles on that. You can't edit them. You can only edit the one you've selected. Um, but what happens is it, it, as it locks on, you know, to a facet of whatever triangle you're trying to edit, you'll see the, the, the circle change. And you can see how it changes direction. It's giving you an, an indication, I think, of the plane or the angle of the facet and if you go over one of these and you get no circle or you don't see it snap like that and grab on and, and kind of change then it means it can't be seen from that side that's where you have to change your angle your view and move the camera around to try to find a, a perspective that will let you actually lock onto it but the real key here is what you do is you basically select a triangle uh, this is the you know the dead simple explanation you hit the delete key and it removes the triangle and then when you're done doing whatever edits you want to do you hit accept now, here's where the tricky part comes in. Um, you can to make this easier. You can click on something and hold the mouse button, and then you can drag it around over other surfaces or other, you know, uh, triangles. And when you do that, and then you hit delete, it'll take out all of them, which is very convenient. However, be extremely careful because if you have, if your view is something like this, and you click here. And you start dragging and you drag up, it will hit this. It'll hit, it'll pick anything. It won't just stay within this group of uh, things. I have it right now set to, by the way, all in a group and by UV Island, as far as how I visualize this. If you do brush, you're going to do raw triangles. If you do uh, all connected, it might do something else. I do all in a group. Um, usually, I do that sometimes because if I pick 
sometimes you'll see some of these are triangles or they're individual triangles and sometimes they're like a whole chunk like this you select that you get the whole piece so that's why I do this by group so it picks the entire piece when it's available of course some meshes are going to be a combination of things sometimes they'll, it'll, it'll be nice about selecting an entire group of them and sometimes you have to do the individual triangles and then I do by UV island just so I can separate them out because if you do by none it looks kind of you can't tell them apart especially when you select them and by material ID, same thing, it kind of flattens everything out. This way you get a few different colors for contrast, so you can kind of see things differently. Anyway, that's just my kind of my, my method for that. But like I said, if you if you start sweeping, if you click and hold and start sweeping across, you're gonna pick up anything that this cursor moves over within this model, within this car model or whatever, whatever object you're doing. So to get around that, if you can, depending on your positioning, because of course you know you can only position in certain ways because if you're too close to something else, it won't work very well or at all is if you get it across against say the sky even these objects in the back would qualify it might pick those but it won't hurt them but against this background of the sky you can then pretty freely just sweep around you know and this makes it a lot faster to edit because you see all these little tiny parts and stuff you got to be able to select like this facet this little facet here this one this one this one this one all these little facets um, to get everything cleared out by doing this I can click here hold it and then I can sweep and as long as I'm sweeping, now be careful not to go. You see that tire directly below the cursor? Don't hit, don't sweep over that. So I gotta stay above that. So you gotta have a clear view so you're not hitting some other part of the mesh you don't wanna remove. But we can basically go across a lot of these and we can sweep around. And a lot of these will be, you gotta be careful. You see how it flattens out there? That's showing me that there's a plane there that's almost flat to the camera or perpendicular to the camera. Um, and there could be multiple. Um, you know, triangles within this, what this horizontal piece looks like. This this right here may not just be one little triangle. It could be several. You may have to also change the view because if they're in a plane and it's, if it's flat, perpendicular to your view, there could be several behind there. So you kind of want to sweep across in a couple different directions. So I usually go like this, and then I go horizontally. And when you see it change, you know you've hit something. So that's helpful. When you see it flip the angle of the circle, you know you've gotten something registered. So you can see how they change color, but you can't always rely on that because you can't always see that. But if you see the ch uh, triangle change, you can see see how that kind of change color. That represents that you've selected it, but you can't always see that depending on the color of the triangle and everything. But if you see it change the plane like that, you know you've hit something and it's selected. I'm uh, still holding the, the key. Now you see this one doesn't, oh, there we go, that one did it. There we go. And that one doesn't seem to be registering. Oh, there it goes. So you got to sometimes play around with the different directions, up and down, across, try to get the angle. Sometimes this angle is very, very, very narrow when, when you're looking at it from a certain view. So when you move the thing over, if you move too fast, you'll skip right past it. So you had to move kind of slow, and then it locked on. Otherwise, it'll go, uh, I'll show you in a second how that would go. It'll like flip between one angle of the green circle and another, and sometimes hitting just the right spot to pick one little thing out is very, very tricky of uh, getting your mouse positioned exactly right. Okay, so we're going to delete that stuff. So you get a good chunk of them taken out. So for instance, uh, let's move over here to kind of reset the circle. So now you see no circle, or it's there. Uh, if I go over here, okay, that one's not really registering. Okay, see how that changed? So right now you can see it kind of stay. But sometimes it'll go from a circle if you're over, if you're like uh, trying to pick one out, like you can only see it from one angle and you're trying to pick it out against the, this background, you'll see it come down here, and it changes, and it changes back. See how that, that's a very important uh, thing to understand how this works. What that's meaning is you'll get the feel for, okay, that's this circle represents this plane, and that circle represents that plane. The problem is right now, this one's pretty easy to pick because it's a fairly thick piece, so the movement of the mouse doesn't have to be all that fine, but sometimes it's a sliver, or a very, very tiny dot, if you're trying to get rid of it, and it'll end up going from this circle, to this circle, to this circle, when you've barely moved the mouse. And it's very hard to get it to lock on here to where you can then hit the button without it flipping back to this circle. So like this one's pretty easy, so I'll just do that real quick as a show and takes it out. So this is a, the, the basic kind of method I use for editing when I can, but this whole sweeping method. Um, doesn't always work that way. You can use the same method, you know, just straight up like this. But again, you gotta be careful you don't end up doing this because then you'll pick up things you don't want to take out. So we're working within like this is very tricky. Uh, larger surfaces aren't so bad, but these tiny parts and stuff like this, I want to get all this little debris cleaned up, is a little on the tricky side. 
And I'm going to work a little bit more here and see if I think of any more things to add to this. I'm sure I got some more stuff on this to add. And it's always a good idea to kind of back up, make sure nothing else got t taken out. In this particular case, my considerations are I'm trying to remove this undercarriage to reduce the mesh count on the mesh. And I don't want to remove this stuff because, as you'll see in a second here, this is part of the interior. So as you can see, there's the interior, these floor panels and stuff are the underside of this, which from this perspective, because we're not in the tri-select, is transparent because it's only one-sided, but it will show the it'll show the mesh when you when you go to edit it. Inadvertently, I had done a previous one where I took out this inner wheel well and the inner wheel inadvertently, and I had to start over basically. So that's why I recommend as you progress through these, if they're very complicated and you're moving lots of triangles, is to make a backup of the car or the car, the, the, the object periodically so that you preserve whatever you've got up to that point in case you make a mistake like I did and had to, I had to go all the way back to almost the beginning because uh, I had apparently um, wiped out one of the tires and, and this under wheel well and it was, I didn't notice it and I continued doing a lot of work after that for like an hour. Found out later because I was working like this side of the car, like over here or something like that and by the time I realized and I went to do a check like I'm doing now and I went around the car and I realized the tire was missing and I was like, uh oh. And I went to my backups, and they all had them. So I had to pretty much go back to the beginning on that one. And you will get a feel for how meshes get laid out this way. You can see it starts to get very tiny facets on curved surfaces. And sometimes those things will get very, very slim. They'll be like a thin edge, like this. And you'll see there's this little tiny piece here, right? And stuff like that. And sometimes it's made up of many, many tiny little pieces there. And, oh, the other another trick is... Try to use this sweeping method uh, for stuff like this, for these smaller, tiny pieces as you have the whole mesh. Because as long as you're within, like, I'm not, I'm wanting to take out this piece, but not this stuff back here. But as long as I'm within this piece, I can sweep across this piece just fine. So I can start here, and I can start moving around like this, sweeping and selecting and sweeping and selecting. So as long as I'm doing it that way, uh, I'm not picking up anything else I don't want. And I'm picking up a lot of these smaller, this is not really a good one to show because I think I already took out the hard stuff that had the really, really tiny pieces. But something like, let's for instance, yeah, here's a good example. So like this, you go here, 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 here. But then you see there's this little, there's a little tiny piece there, little tiny piece there, there, right there in the corner. And all these little things are little are easier to pick up. And, you know, again, you can just kind of sweep across different angles and see the circle change and kind of, make sure you're getting everything. I Sometimes I just do like this across any seam because you never know what little tiny pieces are going to be there that might get missed otherwise. And then they're really hard to take out when you um, don't have this a bit available to you. If you, take, if you take out all the big pieces and leave all the little tiny pieces and you really want to clean it up, you end up with uh, a lot of small fragments that are very hard. Sometimes they're almost impossible to find an angle. Again, you know, like this one, you can see the surface, right? You see the, the triangle. If you get more of an edge here, if you go like this, you see how it thins out. It becomes more of a line. And I probably can select that. Yeah, you see, I can't quite select that. See? So here's a good example. I can't select it because it's not really uh, the face of it that can be selected is not facing the camera right now. And, and my, my, oh, there it went. There it went. There's a good example of, of a very hard one to get thin. Hang on. Yeah, it just went. You just saw it pop there for a second. That's not it, by the way. It's going to be, yeah, there we go. Like that. But you see how hard that is to pick? There we go. I got it. But it's really hard to do that way. And sometimes that's the only angle you get that will work, that will register that circle change. I'm going to delete that just to see if it took it out. So so trying to move around to get a better f view of the face of whatever piece you're trying to take out. And it gets really tricky when you got, let's just take a quick look at something really, really, this little tiny piece here. Now that one actually does register. I think it registers. Maybe not. Maybe not. This one may or may, okay, that one I think does register. But you have to move around because if you get these little tiny, super tiny pieces, sometimes you cannot really figure out which angle or you don't have access to the angle because if it's the only angle available is really close to something else, you can't get the camera between that and that with enough of an angle to, for the circle to see it. So let me try it real quick here and see what we got here. I'm going to do this. Nope, that, see, how, see how that's turning the, the world? That means that that circle did not really lock onto that piece. It just locked onto the sky. So that doesn't help me very much. And sometimes you'll see that doing this method. Um, if that happens, just let go of the mouse and continue and try to find some other angle that will work. So we're really not picking up. That one might have picked up. So if it did, we sweep across these other ones. Not really seeing it from... The, so most of these can't be seen from this angle. I'm going to hit delete real quick. Yeah, it did find that one. 
So again, very difficult sometimes to pick these up when you end up with these fragments. And you're going to have these fragments doing this method anyway, to some degree or another. You just hope that you have too many and that they are not too small and that they can be large enough to pick off with this method because it is a real pain to get these really super tiny pieces. Another thing I guess I could say is that you can only undo so far back. Right now I could undo, but at some point the game decide, or the engine decides to save the map. If it saves the map, even if you have autosave turned off, it sometimes does this where it will then go up here and it'll say unable to undo past map save or something like that. And I've turned off all my autosaves, and it still saves the map sometimes. So even though it doesn't give you a warning about it, or at least it shows that message under the edit uh, menu. I don't know why. If it does that, you can't undo past that, unfortunately. That's why I do these backups, because if I make a mistake, I can't just undo indefinitely. But you can undo quite a ways back sometimes. The other thing I wanted to mention had to do with uh, using the escape key and the delete key, or all the control Z, I guess, actually. So using the escape key and the control Z. So if you do this, if you're selecting stuff and you end up picking the wrong thing, uh, if you hit escape, if you hit escape, it should undo that last step. Um, if you hit escape again, and this is where you got to be careful about hitting escape repeatedly, it'll cancel whatever you just did. So if you had a whole bunch of stuff selected and you hit escape that way, you lose it. You can't get it back. You have to start over with whatever that section you were doing. Uh, similarly, if you do this and you delete it and you say, oh, that was not the one thing I wanted to delete, you generally can do control Z and get it back. And then since it's selected, if you didn't want it selected, you could then hit, again, be very careful, you could then hit escape once to unselect it. Escape will basically unselect the currently selected stuff, essentially. But if you hit escape or double hit escape, it's going to dump you back out, so be very careful. That's uh, another very important thing about how to kind of maneuver within this uh, system. Again, it's pretty limited, but you know it does give you some basic tools, but it helps to understand how they work.